Good evening. It was a cold day in April 2002 when a group of around 30 stalwart explorers left the known comforts of Seattle to venture forth into the vast wilderness of the high desert region of eastern Washington state. Their mission was one of expectation, dangers, and trepidation of the unknown, a trek that could have changed their lives from that point on and perhaps forever. It didn't, of course. It, it didn't change their lives much at all. I mean, don't get me wrong, it, you know, it was probably a nice trip and everything, and could have turned into a very cool one if, uh, if they'd located the legendary bottomless pit they were looking for. Uh, that's right, a bottomless pit, an immense gaping chasm in the ground known as Mel's Hole. Now, Mel's Hole is the stuff of legend, said to be located about 12 miles west of Ellensburg, Washington. It was reportedly a place where townsfolk would dump unwanted old appliances, furniture, or anything else they wanted to get rid of, and this had apparently been going on for decades. Yet, in all that time, it never filled up. One story has it that a cow fell into the hole and could be heard mooing until its calls faded into oblivion. Another story has it that a, a local fellow disposed of his beloved dog in Mel's hole after it passed away, but the very next day was reunited with it alive and well, seemingly uh, appearing from nowhere and apparently unharmed. It is said to be a magical place where black beams of energy can occasionally be seen shooting up from its gaping mouth. As for the expedition itself, it was made up of a mixed lot. The leader of the group was Charlotte Lefebvre, who is the co-director of the Seattle Museum of the Mysteries, a museum specializing in paranormal science, which is another way of saying pseudoscience, which is another way of saying not scientific. Their guide was a Native American shaman called Red Elk. He is an inner circle member of the Hyoka Society, a keeper of the caves and the underworld, a member of the Red Web Society, an honorary member of the Cherokee Nation's Twisted Hair Society, and he is also known as Gerald Osborne of Ellensburg, Washington. His claim to fame is his reported contact with the reptilians who live underground and his wearing of a hunk of metal that he says came from an alien spaceship. Another claim to fame is his having been taken to Mel's Hole in 1961 by his father and subsequent visits thereafter. One other notable member of the party was Pat Pringle, a geologist with the State Department of Natural Resources, who went along just in case there was actually something out there of geological interest. There wasn't, and although the search for Mel's Hole had been an ongoing project for some seven years prior, and included the involvement of Red Elk, their Indian guide, nothing was ever found. The whole affair ended up as nothing more than a camping trip, with Red Elk telling stories about lizard people kidnapping women and taking them back underground to mate with. But what would cause 30 people to head out like this with anticipation of finding a local myth like Mel's Hole? To begin to understand this, we need to go back to the original telling of the popular story. That happened in February of 1997 on the Coast to Coast AM radio show with none other than Art Bell. Art's guest that night was Mel Waters, namesake for Mel's Hole, who came on to spin the tall tale of this deep topic. The hole, he claimed, was located on his property that he owned and was in fact deeper than anyone could determine. He recounted stories of local residents who knew about the hole and had been there many times, all amazed at the wonder of it all and the paranormal aspects to it. On the show, Mel told how he was determined to find out how deep this thing really was and how he set out to do just that. Buying fishing line in large 5,000-yard spools, he tied a one-pound weight on the end and began lowering the line down the hole. Going through spool after spool of fishing line, he managed to reach an 80,000-foot depth. 
That's a tad over 15 miles deep, and still he hadn't hit bottom. Some years later, his stories were confirmed and added to, again on the Coast to Coast radio show, this time by none other than Red Elk himself, who, as far as I can figure, is nothing more than an average American white dude of European heritage who has a flair for the dramatic. And so, with the confirmation of Red Elk, the myth grew and grew until expeditions were launched in an attempt to find Mel's Hole. There have been others from town who have offered up locations for this mythical hole. Hell, I can too, as far as that goes. It's right here. Twelve miles out, just over a bridge before the Manastash Road turns into dirt. But as it turns out, the hole is as hard to find as Mel himself. You see, the only time anyone had ever heard from Mel Waters is the one guest appearance on Art Bell's show. He never called again. Locals, who had been questioned by reporters, reported never meeting or knowing him. The county assessor's office reports that there was no listing of any property ever owned by a Mel Waters. In 1997, the Tri-City Herald reported that Waters was not listed in the county telephone directory or the register of taxpayers, and that authorities in Ellingsburg were unable to find any evidence that he was a resident, thus calling into question whether he even existed. But if you are a believer in this, you can always find those in town who are willing to spin the tale for you and even make up some things if they think you'll bite on the story. They more than likely laugh about it later over a few beers. As far as the fishing line story is concerned, if you bother to do the math, you would find that regardless of the test weight of the line, the total 80,000 feet of it would be enough to cause it to snap under its own weight. Also, according to our friendly neighborhood geologist Pat Pringle, the temperature at 80,000 feet down would exceed 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, more than enough to melt any fishing line. But all of this factual information was available since long before the expedition in 2002, with the only exception to reason coming from a medicine man wannabe French-Irish dude by the name of Gerald Osborne from Ellensburg. There had been some suspicious emails sent to Art Bell and George Norrie from someone claiming to be Mel. The emails told of government involvement, bribery, Mel's forced immigration to Australia, and kidnapping. But none of these could ever be confirmed to be anything but fantasy. Red Elk appeared on Coast to Coast several times after the original story. His own telling of the tale had evolved to include a large structure being built over the hole by our secret government and used to load and unload cargo into the underworld from reptilian spaceships. You know, it takes a certain kind of gullibility to believe those of questionable character to the point of promoting these whacked-out notions, as with Charlotte Lefebvre, who helped build the monuments such as the Seattle Museum of the Mysteries, being evailed as some church to the paranormal world of ghosts, unicorns, and fairy dust. No amount of logic or reason could stop her and her followers from traipsing off into the wilderness for some hand-holding kumbaya moment that means so much for the lost. And it makes guys like me wonder at just how little it takes for all of this to happen, and it confounds me how delusional some people can get, even when those in the same ilk, like Art Bell, can find suspicion in it. Didn't these people listen to the show? Where were they when Art Bell asked Mel Waters? It's really wonderful water. For Mel, power, but... Mel, you wouldn't be pulling my leg. <sighs> this is Super Soylent, and thank you for watching.